sides of the Cotton Bowl. For the coach and his players, anything less this time around would have to be considered a major disappointment. Basically, I feel like the season would be a disappointment if we didn't make it to the Cotton Bowl. You know, we worked hard all summer and into two days, and right now, the only thing we want to do is make it to the Cotton Bowl and beat Texas. For A&M, a victory or tie tonight in Austin means another championship ring, an honor the Aggies hope they won't have to share with Arkansas and Baylor. For Texas and Fred Akers, it may mean even more. A victory could save the season and perhaps a coaching career. It would also cast a familiar orange glow over the skies of Austin, Texas. Star State, where it is going to get wet and remain rather cool. A 30% chance of rain has already been realized here in Austin, Texas for tonight's battle between A&M and Texas. Now, in the Southwest Conference, Texas A&M is playing for its second outright championship in a row. But if they lose, they will head to the Orange Bowl and Arkansas will represent the Southwest Conference in the Cotton Bowl. Happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you, and we are happy that you joined us tonight. Hello, I'm Jim Brando. Now, we've already touched on the importance of this game for Texas A&M and Jackie Sherrill's club, but for his counterpart, Fred Akers, this could be it. Reports surfaced today that Fred Akers' future will be decided by the Board of Regents on Saturday. This is his last chance to make an impression. Now, Mike Patrick and Pat McAnally will call tonight's action. Gentlemen, how is that for importance in a game? Tim, there is so much emotion surrounding this one and so much emotion surrounding and uncertainty surrounding Fred Akers, the coach. I thought a local writer made a great point this week when he said a lot of the Texas fans are upset that Fred Akers has been left twisting in the wind so long. Fred aren't very happy about it either. Well, I think you're right, Mike. You don't have to spend a lot of time around this Texas team to figure out they like Fred Akers. They like the young coaching staff he brought in here this year. I think they're excited about the future. They played very well. They're actually just a few points from going to the Cotton Bowl themselves. I think the emotion of saving their coach's job tonight will be a big factor in this game. I think the biggest thing Texas is going to have to do on defense is to try to stop Kevin Murray in an offense that got 74 points last week. Well, stopping Kevin Murray is difficult, and the reason is he has so much talent around him, and it's an unusual offense. Their fullback, Roger Vick, is their leading ground gainer. He's a game-breaker. Their tailback, Keith Woodside, is an excellent receiver out of the backfield, and their tight end, Rod Bernstein, is their leading receiver. Now, for defense, the key is they're going to have to go with a lot of different coverages because they don't have good linebackers right now. They're young, they're inexperienced. So I look for Texas to be gambling on defense. Now, Texas, it believes, on offense, has the kind of players that can give that complex A&M defense fits tonight. Well, A&M likes to play a lot of different looks, a lot of defenses, a lot of man-to-man -man coverages and blitzes. But because of two players, Brett Stafford, the quarterback, and Eric Metcalf, their tailback, I don't think they're going to be able to do it against Texas. Metcalf can come out of the backfield. You see him all over the field running in motion. He'll catch a lot of passes tonight. And Brett Stafford can hurt him. He can hurt Texas and A&M with both quarterback draws and just going out of the pocket and running on his own. So I look for A&M to play very conservatively tonight. A lot riding on this one. A Cotton Bowl or an Orange Bowl bid for A&M for both teams. Bragging rights in a state where bragging rights mean an awful lot. A&M and Texas coming up. Why CFA football on ESPN is brought to you by Michelob. Exceptionally smooth, distinctive taste is why. The night belongs to Michelob. great deal of pride and there's nothing they take more pride in than their football in college station texas people live and die with their beloved aggies from texas a&m for four years senior wide receiver shea walker has enjoyed great success for the aggies and a victory tonight would make it complete a hundred miles north is austin where senior defensive end blake bronner hopes for a big win tonight that would salvage a disappointing season it's a prideful thing and um, I know there's more important things in life than this game, but uh, it's all that, that I have and that our team has at this present time this week to do. And um, it's, a, it's a big game for us, and it's important for our season. Burn Orange, winners, they're, you know, that's the way they are. They've, they got a good football team. They play hard. They uh, have a lot, of, a lot of talent there. They're the University of Texas. You know, that's the, that's the highlight of our state, I guess, is their university. So, uh, it's, you know, it means something when we go out and play those guys.
Shea Walker grew up dreaming about playing in front of big Texas crowds, as did Brawner. Tonight, both suit up against each other for the final time. It's time to kind of reflect on the past and, and um, everything that this school has meant to me. And um, that's something that I'll, uh, I'll never forget. It's been a great experience. Um, I love this university. I love the program. And it's something that I've always dreamed about. It was playing for the University of Texas and, and, and wearing a uniform with that longhorn on the helmet uh, ever since I was old enough to carry a football and, and play against my brother in the front yard. Going out this last game is kind of not sad, but it you know, kind of makes you think back on it and stuff and look back and, and realize that I've been you know, fortunate to play as long as I have, and I just want to go out with a, with a good game and I'm going to go out and play, you know, play my heart out and leave it all on the field. To me personally, football has been, you know, it's been something that I, that I can really lean on and look back to and, and think of. I've really gotten a lot of strength from it because uh, there have been times when I don't feel comfortable about, you know, some things that might be going on, like growing up or whatever problems that you have or something. But I always know that, you know, I can go out to and practice. Personally, it, it means a, a chance to, for me to display the talents that God gave me. Um, I give him total credit for, for everything that, that I've been able to do out there because um, without him, I'm, I'm nothing. And uh, um, it's been a great experience and it's, it's a great learning experience. You know, I think too many people, you know, you leave it on the field and uh, it, it builds character and it, it teaches you how far you can push yourself and um, what you're really made of. And I think that's something that's going to last me uh, for the rest of my life. Football lends itself to everlasting relationships, and that's what Brawner will miss the most. The team concept, the guys on the team, the friendships, the relationships that you build, um, those are going to last forever. But um, I think that's what every athlete misses when it's all over. Murray has a man on the wing, and he wants to throw for it. Guns it in the end zone, touchdown! A bullet pass to Shea Walker. I like for them to remember me as a, a consistent person, uh, somebody that always gave 100% and uh, that they could always count on. It is a great rivalry played by some great players and I think Shea Walker and Blake Brawner really typify what college football and this rivalry in the Southwest Conference is all about. There may be a war of words, but there's an underlying respect that these two teams and those two players have for one another. So will it be Gigam Aggies or Hook'em Horns? We'll soon see from Austin, Texas, where a turkey night is special on ESPN. For Burnett back here in the ESPN studios, Bino Cook and I will be keeping track of the games in progress tonight. We're back at halftime as well. Of course, the game in progress tonight has the number one Miami Hurricanes going against East Carolina at the Orange Bowl. Jeff Toretta filling in for Vinny Testaverde, a quarterback. He's already thrown two touchdown passes to Mike Irvin. The Hurricanes now up 16-3. to That one is in the second quarter. Our game, of course, Texas and Texas A&M. It's a big game for Texas A&M. They can win the Southwest Conference Championship and the Cotton Bowl. Jackie Sherrill looking to become do something that no other Aggie coach has ever done, and that's beat Texas three years in a row. Yes, he was hired to do two things, beat Texas and go to the Cotton Bowl. Also, bragging rights at the Petroleum Club in Dallas on Monday for the team that wins, and that's one reason he was hired. The Aggie Rooters got tired of going to that club and going as losers. We've got to keep in mind, too, the folks in Arkansas will be keeping track of our game tonight because they have a lot riding on it as well. We are going out to Austin, Texas once again to Tim Brando. There's a look at the Texas flag that symbolizes the state of Texas, which has got the tradition of football behind it. Tonight, the Texas Longhorns and the Texas A&M Aggies get together for a special Thanksgiving evening of college football here on ESPN. Fred Aker. So much emotion involved in this one. A lot of heated words this week, Patrick. So, well, uh, you'd think that Texas would have a lot of uh, advantage here emotionally playing for the coach and being at home. But John Hagee, their strong safety, got Texas a and pretty fired up. He said tails. And it's tails. Texas wins the toss. And Texas has won the toss. 
And they're pointing toward a goal. So Texas A&M will receive, and Texas, I'm not sure, Pat, if they deferred the choice. It didn't sound like it. It seemed like they took the end of the field. Yeah, it's very unusual because it's not very windy tonight. You'd think they'd want to have the ball, but uh, maybe they want to fire that defense up, let them stop A&M. Could be. Those last-second preparations before the kick. And there is Texas on the sideline with embattled coach Fred Akers. And they have already announced that there will be a decision made on his future Saturday. Here's the way this series has gone. It is the oldest, of course, in the Southwest, and Texas dominant in it. But Texas A&M is closing the gap, and in the last 10 years, it's 5-4, and four, Fred Akers' record against Texas A&M and the last two years the game has been dominated by the Aggies there's Jackie Sherrill in his fifth year already with 34 victories at Texas A&M he's done a great this club and has them on the verge of another Southwest Conference Championship and another bid in the Cotton Bowl and there is Fred Akers he's just thinking about one more win and it would be his 87th as the Longhorn head coach succeeding Darrell Roy. There's so much tradition in this game, Mike. You know, I'd rate it only second to the Yale-Harvard game as far as importance and emotion, <laughs> and I think we have it all tonight. I didn't know they got emotional up there. <laughs> Once a year, Rod Harris will wait on Jeff Ward's kick. There is Harris in the middle of a three deep. Averaged 18.8 yards a carry on kickoff return. It is really a pleasure for us to be here tonight. Most of us have watched this game as kids growing up uh, with parents and grandparents on Thanksgiving and always made sure we watched Texas, Texas A&M. It is truly an honor to be here to do this one, especially with all the emotion, and you can really feel it here at Memorial Stadium with 80,000-plus on hand. Valentine will take it. Make it Washington. Cuts to the outside. Washington at the 30. 34-yard line before he's driven out of bounds, and Texas A&M, after a 31-yard kickoff return by Mickey Washington, will start in excellent field position. There's junior quarterback Kevin Murray. Already has the Southwest Conference career leader in TD passes. A lot of talent behind him, too. Roger Vick is the key to the rusher game, while Bernstein and Walker have had exceptional seasons as receivers. And the interior line for a and has overcome inexperience and has developed into quite a unit. And they'll give it to the fullback. This is Vic, who's tripped up as he crosses the 35 to the 36. And that was Espinoza. That Texas defense has had some problems, but not in the front four. Espinoza, Bronner, and Aldridge are one, two, three on the team in tackles. Injuries have devastated the linebackers and hurt Texas the most this year. The secondary is better now, especially with Peavy's return at free safety. He is a big hitter. Woodside is in at tailback. Now he and Vic 43 split and Woodside goes to a wing on second and eight. Murray looking in the flat then dumps it over the middle of Bernstein. His big tight end first down gets to the 49 still in his feet to midfield. Tillman makes the tackle along with Duncan and Bernstein has just had a great year. Well, they had an outstanding Cotton Bowl for the last game last year. He only had nine catches the entire season, came into the Cotton Bowl, had six catches, and they expected him to have a big year, but I don't think they expected him to lead the conference in receiving, and that's what they've been doing, dumping it to him underneath and letting him run. He was very disappointed when they put him at tight end. He's a running back and wanted to stay there. Woodside again on a win, and they'll give it to Vic. Big hole off the right side, Vic to the 40, to the 48-yard line. 
gaping hole on the right side. Richard PV number 42, had to make the stop. A 13-yard gain for Vic. And number 94 for Texas, Brian Espinosa, who made the first play at 21 tackles last week. He's the key to this game. He's got their double team in. They're coming out. They're going to take him out of the plays. And they're going to have some big holes if they double team him like that. Again, no linebackers there for support, Mike. That's the problem. If you double team offensive linemen, some linebacker is supposed to be free. They are very inexperienced. They have been terribly injured at that position. Thick again. They'll do it all night if Texas can't stop him, but Texas stopped him that time. And up from the secondary was Stephen Braggs to make the big hit. Aldrich also in on the stop. It's very, very unusual for your front four, your defensive line. Linemen, as you said, three. Uh, the, they're the three leading tacklers on this Texas team. Usually you look for your linebackers, particularly in a 4-3. And that shows the youth there and also the fact that Texas is strong up front. It is second down, seven yards to go, opening minutes of the ball game. The ball up to Texas 35-yard line. Vic again tripped up. The first man that got him was 94, Espinosa. Then he fell into the pile. Brawner also in on the stop. Good job by Espinosa. 249-pound senior is very quick. Junior college transfer. And it's odd to see a junior college transfer as a starting lineman on a program uh, like Texas. You don't see it that often. Well, they'd be in big trouble if they hadn't uh, acquired him. And another unusual thing is that 250 pounds, uh, he really does it on his quickness and just his ability to read. They'll go with three wide receivers on this play. To the near side, make it four wide receivers now on third and long. Murray under pressure, dumps it over the middle and throws behind Tony Thompson. Eric Jeffries was right with him. And Murray under pressure didn't throw it that well that time. Boy, the operative word right there is pressure. They put it on him in a hurry. He really had a difficult throw there because he was hurried. He didn't give his receiver enough time to cut across the defender. Espinosa drilled him. And Craig Stump will come in to punt it away. Although now they set up and will shift into punt formation. Something Texas has to be aware of on fourth and five. Stumps is trying to pooch it close to the goal line and will get the bounce sideways. It'll go out of bounds around the 12, 13 yard line. So Stump doesn't get much of a kick in terms of distance, only 21 yards, but exactly what the coach was looking for. Something that went out of bounds inside the 15. Junior quarterback Brett Stafford who already owns 11 Texas passing records, but has had 14 interceptions this year. The running game has struggled with no one back over 500 yards, and the receiving core has lost a good one this week when tight end Tim McCrary went down. The line seems to be a collection of injuries and changes. I said McCrary, that's Tim McCray, suffered a freak injury to his spinal cord and a half-speed blocking grip. And absolutely nothing for Norris is drilled by Johnny Holland. And AM defense up front is quite good, especially on the pass rush and making big plays. And at linebacker, Holland and Kelm have had outstanding seasons. They're one, two in tackles. The secondary is the least experienced unit. It's been the most vulnerable, too. Second and ten, maybe a passing down for Stafford. Got Metcalf in there behind him. And Metcalf will get the ball on the sweep. Cut it back. Darts to about the 18-yard line. And it was Howard, the outside linebacker at 223 pounds. An excellent athlete who made the tackle. Metcalf does have his dad's moves, doesn't he? Uh, he was so dangerous. I can remember punting to him. Every time I punted, I just prayed I wouldn't have to try to tackle him in the open field. And, they, you know, they say Eric's a little quicker. He's a little smaller, but... So explosive back there. That would have been quite a matchup to see you trying to tackle Terry Metcalf. That would have been fun. <laughs> Third and five for Texas. Opening possession of the first half of the Longhorn. Stafford dumps it to Clark. The tight end's got the first down at the 24-yard line. Howard made the stop along with Kelm, but Clark, who had 14 catches coming in, Gets his first grab. Well, there was a case of AM going to that conservative defense. A lot of times uh, they'll blitz in that situation, but they've decided against Texas that they're going to give him these little dumps over the middle, like to their tight ends. It's a little unusual for AM. Saw Everett Gay, number 19, check in their, your picture. He's the flanker back for the Longhorns on first and 10 from the 24. Metcalf and Norris, the running back, that's Gay in motion. Metcalf. 
slashes inside to the 30. This is the one area, Pat, where Texas has not been strong this year. That's the running game. Well, and particularly when you've got to use someone like Eric Metcalf to go up the middle for you. They haven't got a lot of yardage there. They're fullback Norris. So they need to go outside with Metcalf and then try to sneak him in just like that. And he can hide behind the lineman and hopefully find a little seam. Kevin Nelson shuttling in off the bench. He'll be the flanker on this play. Second down, four yards to go, Longhorn. And it's complete to Metcalf. He gets to the 38, maybe the 39-yard line. It's another first down. Metcalf, who now has 35 catches on the year, that's the way they love to use him. Get him in the open field. If they can get him outside and let him open, uh, run in the open field, there's no one out there in AM that's going to be able to guard him man man. But here we again. We see him in their zone. He just Stafford does a nice job of finding him. Now he'll turn it upfield and use his speed and pick up the extra yardage. They have to be patient, this Texas offense. They have to control the ball and take those little throws and try to turn them upfield and turn them into six and seven yard games, just like that. Stafford, two for two, two little dump passes over the middle, but perfectly effective. Texas would dearly love to get on the board first. Metcalf, nowhere to go, cut it back, got maybe a yard. Good play by Chet Brooks coming up from the corner. Number 27 closed in a hurry. Had a lot of people around the ball and quick. Well, they have tremendous speed in their, uh, their linebackers. Howard, Holland, and Kelm can all run, and Bullet, the substitutes, come in for John Roper, can run too. So it's very difficult to go laterally, even when you're as fast as Eric Metcalf. Texas on second and nine. Gets Tony Jones into the ballgame for the first time. He's to the top of your screen, number four. The little man has uh, had four catches, three for touchdowns. Instead, the delay to Metcalf can't get outside of Sammy O'Brien who's playing with a painful turf toe, didn't play very much a week ago, but was right there and swallowed up Metcalf. Well, one thing that really worries the Texas coaches is they have Alan Champagne, who's really third on their, at the beginning of the season at center. He's going to have to handle Samuel Bryant, which he didn't on that play. So Texas may have to go with some double teams with Blackmore and Zaton, their two other guards, which, of course, will free up the linebackers to make the plays. Run blocking is going to be a little tough because they lost tight end Tim McRae and right guard Billy Ray Todd to injuries this week. It's third and about eight. Stafford guns it in complete. Good defense that time by Flowers as they were throwing for Johnson. The crowd, I think, wanted an interference call. It'll bring up a fourth down. We've got 8.09 to go in a rapidly moving first quarter. And Alex Waits, who is one of the better kickers in the country, averaging 46.2 yards a kick and almost 42 yards net, is in the punt. And Harris is deep to the sea. Chance to bring it back across the 20 and trip because he got across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. An eight-yard return after a 42-yard kick. Timeout with eight minutes to go. First quarter, we are scoreless between Texas and Texas A&M. Yeah, yeah. Lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. When you want power that works, lean on the 350 V8, now available in every full-size Chevy. Now fuel injected for the most power and torque of any half-ton pickup. You were born to drum, you and Casio. The stereo keyboard comes with PCM drum sounds. The DP1 electronic drums add snare. Bass, rim shot, hi hat. Casio, be the drummer you were born to be. Texas A&M at Texas is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet, and by Casio, maker of the shock-resistant, water-resistant G-Shock. It's one tough watch to beat. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. A&M and the Longhorns tied. Nothing, nothing. Eight minutes to go, first quarter. 
Both teams have had one possession and not been able to move the ball. At least for a score. This is Woodside cutting outside on the sweep and carrying bodies with him to about the 33-yard line. Stephen Braggs, number six, in on the stop, along with middle linebacker Dwayne Duncan. And you, you, now you wonder who's going to take credit for this. I think that may be a little move by the Texas fans trying to make the Aggies look I like they can't so spell. I think oh, our director, Mark Payton, who's a Texas graduate, uh, actually did that sign and, and pointed it out to us. That looks like a Greek spelling or something. Yeah, it does. Second and three. Fake to Woodside. Murray under pressure again. And guns it complete to Bernstein. It'll be enough for the first down. And he is really nailed out of bounds into the sideline bench. Braggs got over there in a hurry, and Jackie Sherrill is upset at it. Wanted a flag, and Bernstein taking a little time to get up. Looked like it quite a legal hit, however. Well, Rod Bernstein, right, right in the middle of your screen, just going to run a little crossing route again. This is what he does so well. He's only averaging a little under 11 yards, and this is why. He catches a lot of this ball control type throws. Murray goes to him when he's in trouble. He looked upfield and found Bernstein on the short route. That looked like a pretty good hit by Bragg. Got him at the sideline. It's not clearly out of bounds, but it's a first down. Vic again. This time dragged down right as he got to the line of scrimmage. Steve Llewellyn, the 271-pound sophomore from Fort Worth, brought him down. And as we told you, that front four for Texas has done a pretty good job all year long. The entire defense has played better since Oklahoma. And even the young linebackers have gotten better since they've had a chance to play some. Well, they've got four or five games under their belt. They really just were hit with so many injuries. They were down to third stringers, guys that had never played before. But they've recovered now, and I think the coaches have got the right strategy for this game. Second and six. Murray, another little dump off this time to Shea Walker, and Walker's flattened at the line of scrimmage by Eric Jeffries. They are looking for these short passes and doing an excellent job of defensing. Well, they're mixing up their coverages. Again, they, they have confidence that their defensive front four can put pressure on Murray. They're going to leave their linebackers and some of their secondary up close in those plays. And that time, too, Pat, it looked like they only had two linebackers in there and were going with their five defensive backs, something I think Jackie Sherrill expected, too. Right, they'll go at five and six defensive backs on first and second downs, even, because they need to help their linebacker situation. Third and four. Harris in motion. Texas showing blitz. Did they get back off? No, they're offside. And from the blind side, Thomas Aldridge nailed Murray. But unfortunately for Texas, they're going to be called for offsides. And that will give AM a first down. A little too anxious. Uh, there's no excuse for a linebacker or a secondary guy going offsides. Oh, no, it's against AM. Holy cow. He must have flinched when he jumped across. If you don't make contact, then it's up to the offense to stay. Boy, this is a surprising call here. That's it looked like the left tackle barely moved his hand. Number 79, Lewis Cheek. Right there, Aldridge. He comes around the end. Thomas Aldridge is their leading sacker. Excellent pass rusher, and he's going to come in there all the time on the outside and try to contain him. There's Reveille. There was no play. It will be third down. So they have to mark off the penalty, so it's going to be third and now nine because it was a procedure penalty before the snap. Gerald Senegal checks into the uh, Texas lineup. So it looks like they have six defensive backs in there right now on a short pass. Austin. The reason is Texas came in here with this game plan of confusing him. They're going with a lot of different looks. They know they can't stab back. They let him stand back and throw the ball. I think they're confusing him. Todd Schantz will come on to punt. Schantz was punting uh, earlier in the year. He has only kicked eight times this season. They're coming after it. And they almost got there. Metcalf driven all the way back to the nine-yard line. Signals fair catch. Texas went for the block. And Shantz unloaded for 50 yards. 5.35 to go in the quarter. We are still scoreless. Except these signs, who sits around all week and does it. But we thank you for the thought. And it's Texas A&M. Texas, nothing, nothing. First quarter. Texas backed up to its own 10-yard line. Metcalf, the deep man in the eye. And a fake by Stafford. Complete. 
Got a first down up at the 30-yard line to Gabriel Johnson. And Stafford is really throwing the ball with a lot of confidence. Well, here's the new Texas offense. They're not just running the ball anymore. First down from their 10-yard line. They go with the play action. Just hit Gabriel Johnson on a little comeback route. And Stafford threw that ball right on the money. But again, it's the philosophy that's changed so much here at Texas, and that's why they're excited about the future. Stafford, three out of four, 34 yards. Already holds 11 school records. Just past Bobby Lane for the number one all-time yardage mark. And he'll run the option this time. Fakes and pays for it as he got back inside, and it was Big Howard. Todd grabbed him and threw him down. Dwayne Painter, who is the offensive coordinator, came uh, this year, said that one another thing, another way they'll attack this Texas A&M defense because they're so good laterally is that option with Stafford who can keep the ball. But there you saw Todd Howard, number 73, made that play. Those linebackers are very quick and they're good tacklers. LaRon Brown, 84 to the near side. Jones, number four to the far side. Here comes the blitz. They unload for Jones. He jumped too early and the ball is overthrown. Flowers on coverage. Boy, he went up there like two seconds. I guess when you're when you're only 5'7", you have to jump as high as you can, as early as you can. Well, he went to JC earlier this year. He wanted to be the next Spud Webb, and he definitely gets up in the air. But the problem is he's not quite a seasoned receiver yet. As you can see, his timing's way off. And there's the ball. I'll tell you, when you're 5'7", you better jump at the exact correct <laughs> moment if you're going to come down with a pass like that. Ball did float a little bit. He can go deep, too. He's the Texas 200-meter champion in high school. Third and eight right now for Stafford. Texas A&M was trying to get time out. They had too many men on the field, and the pass is complete to Metcalf. Metcalf to the 35-yard line. Rod Sadler, number 99, was running off the field, knew he wasn't going to make it, and signaled timeout, couldn't get it, so the penalty is against A&M. Well, oh, offenses live for this play right here. You have a cover two. The safeties are both going to go on top to double team the wide receivers to the middle is wide open and no problem for Metcalf to beat a linebacker here look how much room he has Stafford read it perfectly veteran quarterback hit him and he just runs when he gets the ball he is trouble but again it's that offense right there they put it in they have the ability to beat defenses with the passing game now and that's helped Texas considerably Jackie Sherrill is on the field and he is really upset he thought, I believe, that his team was entitled to a timeout as uh, they were signaling for it, trying to get it. That's what he's saying. Institution infraction by the defense. The player was not off the field. The penalty will be declined. It's a first down. That was a case where AM was going to one of the more complicated defenses. They were yep. changing personnel. They went to that cover two, the splitting safeties, and they got burnt big on that play. Did they ever? And Jackie Sherrill pleading his case, but it's obvious uh, he had 12 men on the field at the time of the play. Although that man running off, Sadler did want the timeout and didn't get it. So it's first and 10 Texas inside the A&M 35. Metcalf again. Trying to use his speed to get outside, and Holland is all over him. Holland had plenty of help. A lot of white and red out there. One thing about the Texas offense that's interesting, and you'll notice it a lot of times when they go up to the line of scrimmage, they use two plays. It's called a check with me system. Brett Stafford will go up, he'll have two plays. He chooses between one or the other. That's at least 60% of the time. That's what he did on that, that read earlier on the when he split the safeties to Metcalf. He read it correctly. Loss of the yard on the last carry, and we are starting to get rain here in Austin. Nelson was the man in motion, and it's a reverse to Nelson. Stafford in front trying to throw a block. 20! 16-yard line, and Texas A&M fooled on the reverse, and Fred Akers is pulling it all out of the playbook. Well, they set this up beautifully. One way to beat a great lateral pursuit team is to make them over-pursue, and that's what they're going to do here. They give the ball to Metcalf, and they're all running to the top of the screen. They hand back to Nelson, and they're all out of position now. Look at that nice wall they set up for blocking. Stafford's trying to catch up with Nelson, but doesn't quite do it. Well, Stafford really took a shot when he finally got in there, too. It's a first and ten Longhorns as the umbrellas come out here at Memorial Stadium. Only one wide receiver this time. Now they split two. And number they'll give it to Norris, the fullback. Sadler was in on the stop pick, number 99, at 273 pounds out of Atlanta, Georgia. Preseason All-American. Fred Akers has handled this with a lot of class this year. He has been under the gun constantly. His team was embarrassed in the loss to Oklahoma. But he just hangs in there and says he's not about to apologize for his coaching or his team. And he'd love to win this. 
And now we've got a timeout called by the Longhorns on the second and eight with 2.46 to go first quarter. We have no score, but the Longhorns are driving. You might get caught out in the middle of nowhere with a dead battery, but I won't. This is a Delco maintenance free battery. And when this green eye is showing, it means I've got all the starting power I need, up to 770 cranking amps. If you think your battery's fading fast, I'd start thinking Delco. Now through January 3rd, get a $5 rebate on most Delco batteries. See a participating AC Delco retailer for details. Never wait for trouble. Two minutes and 46 seconds left to go in the first quarter in a scoreless grudge match between Texas A&M and Texas, and the Longhorns have the ball at the 15-yard line second of the down. Aggies. Second down, eight yards to go. Stafford, here comes the blitz. Got away from one, two, dumps it off to Clark, his tight end. And Clark will still lose eight yards as Brooks makes the tackle, but it could have been much worse, and Stafford really had to scramble. They brought everybody, uh, particularly Johnny Holland, number 11. Very, very fast. He's going to run Stafford down here and almost takes him for a big, big loss. Stafford has the presence here to turn around and deliver this ball. They're still going to lose eight yards by the time he gets it to the tight end. But that just shows you Holland. When Holland blitzes, he has such speed. He's an inside backer, but he runs like an outside backer. So now it's third and 15 for Texas. And the officials will stop the clock. It looked like Texas A&M called the timeout, and they did. So with another timeout and 2.07 to go, first quarter, we'll be back in Austin, Texas, after this. Noxzema presents another close shave. In 1941, Joe DiMaggio set the record for hitting safely in 56 consecutive games, but he almost lost it after only 23 games. Jolton Joe had come to the plate four times without a hit, and his streak appeared to be ended. But the Yanks tied the game and sent it to extra innings, giving Joe another turn at bat. We'll be right back. Placing a third and 15 after the loss when Stafford scrambled and hit his tight end Steve Clark. They don't want to lose any more yardage and get pushed back to uh, a very difficult field goal try. Stafford, five out of 760 yards so far. Under pressure, he wants it all, and he's got Jones! Couldn't hold it in the end zone. Jones covered very, very well good down good there. Try, good try. This should have This should have been a touchdown, Mike. Had Stafford delivered it sooner and delivered it lower, he had the seam. An excellent call by the coaches, but you see, he had to throw it over the defensive lineman. That's what stopped this play, and he jumped early again. Jones just doesn't have his timing yet as a receiver, but had he been able to throw that ball harder and lower, he could have had it in the scene before the safety got over there. Gary Jones was the man who had the good coverage on him, and now Ward will come in to try a 39-yard field goal. Ward with 57 career field goals, the Southwest Conference record, and he is an outstanding kicker. Got it all. And the Longhorns get on the board first with a minute 57 to go first quarter. Smiles all around on the Texas bench. Our live presentation of college football continues next Saturday, and we offer up, uh, offer up a doubleheader for you. First live CFA action between Brigham Young and San Diego State, followed by a Pac-10 battle featuring Arizona and Stanford, and it's really a road game. They're playing in Tokyo. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock with the Mercury College Football Scoreboard Show. Very important, I think, Pat, for Texas to get on the board. Did I say next Saturday? I'm sorry. Those are coming up this Saturday. That's two days from now. Uh, I think it's very important for Texas to get on the board first. Well, it'll allow them to play a 
you know, maybe tighten up their defense, not gamble so often if they can get the lead. Problem they're going to have is uh, they're not going to be able to go to a running game. They're going to have to continue throwing those short passes. R.C. Slocum, defensive coordinator for AM. Right now, uh, Texas is beating his team with some smart reads by Stafford. And, you know, you have a weapon like Metcalf. You send him long and send him short. It's tough to defend. Texas will kick it off. Here's Ward. An impressive drive for Texas. Ten plays. It went 68 yards. They got to the 15-yard line. Took three minutes and 38 seconds, and Ward capped it off with a field goal. There is Bevo. Well, they do some uh, they do some nasty things in the week before this game. They say uh, all the Aggies have Bevo burgers all week. <laughs> Well, those are some serious tusks. Those aren't longhorns. Texas to kick it away. Ward, who had the field goal, now 58 for his career. 19 out of 23 this year. Valentine at the 5. Cut down as he got to the 21-yard line. Let's go down to the sideline and Tim Brando. Mike and Pat, you can really feel the pressure of this one. There was as much verbiage in today's local newspaper as much as you'd find in a pro wrestling match. Now, John Hagee, who is the uh, strong safety for Texas, had much of that verbiage written up. I should mention, Hagee was penalized twice in the Texas Tech game, and one of those penalties really cost Texas the game. He said some statements today that not only ridiculed many of the A&M players, but really insulted anyone close to Texas A&M. It's that kind of a series. Murray dumps it over the middle this time. Bernstein again is big tight end, and he's tripped up by Jeffries. Bernstein, they love that pattern, and it's very tough to cover. Well, you said it earlier. He feels like he's a running back, and he played it in his past, and that's why he's so tough to stop. He's able to beat people with his speed, and after he catches the ball, he's always a threat. A lot of tight ends just run over people. He can run around, almost breaks his tackle here. He goes down. As long as Murray has time to pick him out, he's going to be able to hit him. Good tackle by Jeffries, and this is a good Texas secondary. First and ten. Texas going with five defensive backs. Vic picked up and unceremoniously dumped by Mike January. At 230 pounds, he picked up the 221-pounder and flattened him. Well, you'll never see a better tackle than this. I mean, he absolutely perfect form. He picked him up and threw him back all by himself. He had no help on this. Mike January, right here, just catches him in midair. Look at that. And Timmy just said it is like wrestling out here, and that's a good example of it. That was a pin. Second and eight. Murray, near sideline. He's got Woodside out of the backfield. And Woodside gets up to about the 43-yard line. Well, that's the other ball control weapon we haven't seen much of yet tonight is Keith Woodside out of the backfield. Like Bernstein, he catches a lot of underneath routes, and then he picks up extra yardage with his running ability. That's why Texas A&M is so difficult to stop. They come at you in so many ways you don't expect. I think Texas has made up its mind. You can pick away, but you're not going to get deep. And we'll find out if A&M has the patience to do it. First down, Aggies. Murray to throw on first down. Has good protection this time and throws complete. Inside the Texas 40 to the 37-yard line is Tony Thompson. January and Peavy in on the tackle. And that time he went downfield and threw a bullet. Well, he had all kinds of time. And you just can't let Kevin Murray sit back there and burn you like this. He'll find Thompson crossing. And the linebackers were up close. They didn't get into their drops good enough. And he had an opening and he delivered it. That's the thing about Murray. He is not a running quarterback. He's a straight drop back and he'll fire the ball at you. 19-yard gain for a first down. Woodside trying to cut outside. And the play is stopped before it got off. We have some kind of a procedure call. Check it out for you. And it is procedure against AM. You know, Mike, you mentioned the fact that uh, Texas is saying to AM, you're going to have to be patient to beat us. You're going to have to beat us underneath. And I talked to the coaches yesterday from Texas, and they said what happened against Arkansas and the reason AM lost was because Kevin Murray just got frustrated. They kept dropping eight people and playing mm -hmm. zones. And have a dead ball, 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 ball start, offense, first down. He started forcing the ball, and that's how Arkansas knocked off AM. Well, we remember the first game that we saw him against LSU. Uh, they really gave him a tough night. 
Texas. That defense has given a lot of people a tough night. Texas trying to do it right now. Murray, excellent stats, but only 62 yards on those six completions. Draw play to pick. To the 30-yard line. Good hit by Braggs. Peavy. Vick is quite a running back. He's a heck of a fullback. We mentioned earlier that Thomas Aldridge, 97, takes an outside release on his pass rushes all the time, and they'll just cut right underneath him. And the thing about Roger Vick that's special is he's a fullback that runs like a tailback. Look at the speed he has there. That is the end of the first period of play from a sold-out Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. It's the Longhorns 3, the Aggies nothing. There's a fan who already has made up her mind who is the favorite in this game and who she's going to root for. I think she likes Fred Akers, too. I was looking at her. She probably does. Second and three. AM and goes for the first down with Vick up the middle. Another tackle by Stephen Braggs, number six in the middle of that pack. And Braggs has been in a lot of tackles, and they are going after each other with a little extra emotion. Bernstein and Braun are the first ones to get in it. Take a look at the statistics in the first quarter. Pretty even ball game. You can see total yards, only 10 yards different. Time of possession very close. Not much to choose from, but Texas got the only points out of it. On a 39-yard field goal. Murray to throw on first down to Woodside. Complete, driven out of bounds. Tackled by Peavy. Some of the Cora cadets on the sideline. Tradition-rich school is Texas A&M. Richard Peavy. Want to update some scores for you. One in particular, and it's this. Closer than expected, even without Testaverde. 16-3, the Hurricanes. Second down, three yards to go after a gain of seven. Looking to Woodside to the back. This is Woodside trying to cut it outside. And a great play by Braggs. Stephen Braggs just wouldn't let him outside and then kept forcing him back and made the tackle himself. He is a tough, versatile player who's had to play both corner and safety this year. Well, the secondary is very important for Texas tonight. They've made a lot of big tackles already. Braggs is right in the middle of your screen right here. He's just going to take Woodside, and he's just not going to let him get outside. That shows his speed, not only his speed, but his tackling ability. He kept position, wouldn't let him get wide. Well, he was just a shadow. Every step that Woodside took, Braggs was right with him. Now third and seven, and Murray sends two wide receivers to the far side. Four-man rush, plenty of time. Now pressure, and they got it. Sacked at the 32-yard line, and it's Blake Brunner with his eighth sack of the season. Well, Bronner gets credit for this sack, but I'll tell you, it was a strategy on defense right there. They doubled Bernstein. They doubled the other wide receiver. He had nowhere to go. Murray's just going to stand in the pocket. He can't let go. Double coverage, and Bronner's going to make that tackle. I know he's a happy senior. He was fired up for this game. And if he hadn't gotten him, Thomas Aldridge, 97, would have. And there's a good look at Bronner. And now they will go for the field goal with Scott Slater, another brilliant kicker. This is a 48-yard attempt. And as you can see, he will tie the Southwestern Conference record and break the school record if he can hit this one. Plenty of distance. But it's wide. That ball would have been good from 60, but he left it wide to the right. And Texas clings to a 3-0 lead with 13-02 to go first half from Austin, Texas. Tonight's live college football special is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda Value. Mike Patrick, Pat McAnally, and Tim Brando. Glad to have you with us on a Saturday night from Austin on ESPN. It's been an excellent ball game with 13.02 to go first quarter. Texas with a football and a 3 0 lead. Nelson in motion. Metcalf and another reverse to Nelson. Not this time. It worked once, but Steve Bullet, number 66, saw it coming this time. 
Well, defensive players get burnt once and they get chewed out on the sideline. They're probably not going to get burnt again. Well, I don't think you should run uh, reverses this uh, close together. No question about it. He has nowhere to go on this play. Bullet did get burnt on the last play, and this time he stayed home. And uh, maybe you go to double reverse the next time. Because yeah. They might have been able to go the other way, but not this way. Loss of five, second and 15. Stafford fumbled the ball and has to fall on it. And the officials say he got it back, but they'll lose another five or six. Mistakes have hurt Texas dearly this year. They have not made a turnover tonight, and it's something Fred Akers will try to stay away from. Well, this just looks like a bad exchange. The ball went right through his hands and hit him in the stomach. He was very fortunate that the ball fell down where he could get it and that Texas A&M didn't have any pressure on him early because he was in no position to fall on that ball. I think he got it with his legs eventually. Yeah. Jackie Sherrill looking for another Cotton Bowl bit. Third and now 20. Stafford unloads in a hurry. All the way to the AM 27 yard line. Chet Brooks has to make the tackle on Evan Nelson, the man who was burned a couple of plays ago on the reverse, and Stafford hit him right on the numbers. I can't believe third and long again. Texas AM gets caught in a trick defense. They're going to get burned. Here's a, a view of their defense. They'll drop back. They're playing zone all the way. But the safety does not get in a position to take away that play. He should have been over in the middle of the field more. Helped the wrong side. He guessed to the right. He should have been more in the left or in the middle of the field where he could have taken that throw. Easy completion. No way they should have been able to get that ball in. Longest reception of the season for Nelson. Only his seventh catch. And Stafford fumbled it again. Metcalf picked it up on a bounce. And really gets dumped on the sideline. Holland was over there, and Brooks took his feet from under him, out from under him, number 27. Oh, that's two uh, two fumbled snaps in three plays. Well, part of the problem is Alan Champagne, again, is their second or third string center. They're going, you know, they're not going with their regular player, and that makes it tough on a quarterback sometimes, trickling in, a, in an emotion-packed game. And they were fortunate to hear Metcalf pick the ball up, but a nice tackle right there by Brooks. It's two tackles in a row he's made. A loss of four on that play, second and 14. Boy, Stafford has really been impressive. And Texas is doing it with an injury riddle lineup. Stafford quarterback draw, big play. Just tripped up as he got to the 24-yard line, saving tackle by James Flowers. And when he took off, there was a gaping hole. That's a well-designed we offense, Pat. Well, we said this at the beginning of the game that Brett Stafford loves to run this quarterback draw. They're going to try to call it four or five times a game because he's such a good runner. Here's Johnny Holland right in the middle of your screen. It's going to get shielded and blocked right there by Norris. Norris with a nice play, save that. But again, they're dropping back in those zones so deep that Stafford's going to have some running room. Gain of seven for Stafford. And it's third and seven for the Longhorns. Leading 3 0 and bidding for more. Stafford doesn't like what he sees and uses his second timeout here in the first half. 9.56 to go in the second quarter. It's Texas 3, Texas AM nothing. Cheryl was most concerned about during the last series, the offensive series for Texas A&M, R.C. Slocum, the defensive coordinator, talked to his linebackers. He said, guys, read your keys and don't let number two beat you. Since that time, they've been watching Metcalf closely. That enabled Nelson to be open down the seam, and it also enabled Stafford to get something done on the quarterback draw, Mike and Pat. Thank you, Tim. It is third and seven right now. Here comes the blitz. Stafford unloads to Metcalf. And he can't get away from Kelm at the 25-yard line. Larry Kelm with a saving tackle out there. Good job by Stafford just to unload. Well, this will keep him in field goal range too, Michael. That was an excellent throw. He read the safety blitz. Metcalf just reads hot on this play. He sees the backer coming, so he just breaks out to the flat, and they're hoping he can go one-on-one -on -one and get rid If he'd have caught this ball clean, he had a better chance. But Kelm with a nice tackle. When you're one-on-one -on -one with Metcalf, you're in a tough situation. But Kelm got the job done. Jeff Ward, who has been good from 39, will try from 42. And he pulled that one badly. Did not get much of that one at all. And Texas will hold its 3-0 lead with 9 minutes, 11 seconds to go first half. We'll be back in Austin after this.
for the football, and Roger Vick goes up the middle, tripped up as he reaches the 29-yard line. And it was Brauner who knocked him down. Our attendance tonight, 79,623. I think both these teams could be 0-10, and, and you draw 79,000. Well, they are fired up. I'll tell you, these Aggie fans, they come in there, they dominate noise-wise in the stands. <laughs> and they don't sit down. One of the great traditions in college football, that 12th man for A&M. Second and seven for the Aggies right now. Murray to throw. Four-man rush under pressure again. Throws for Woodside. Nice catch. They'll only pick up about three, and Jeffries and Senegal were right there. But excellent, even though Murray is completing his pass, there's been excellent coverage by Texas in the secondary. Well, I think what you said about being patient is right. They're giving them these short completions, but they haven't scored points yet. There's a good look at the crowd. It came in a Memorial Stadium tonight. Well, there's no seats. It's packed on both sides. Second and a yard. Make it third and a yard. Vic. And he got it. Senegal made the tackle again along with Mike January. Well, a &M's right side of their line, Fontenot, Land, and Bernstein are all very good. They're strong. This is where they want to run the ball when they have short yardage and goal line. As you can see, they're going to take their men. The stalemate's good enough. Bronner got double teamed, which took him out of the play. Vic found the opening pickup, or Woodside picked up the first down. Land is about 347. He didn't need any help. Murray again to Woodside. This time he's flattened by Jeffries and couldn't hold on to the ball. Just superb coverage in the secondary by Texas tonight. So many hits by Jeffries and Braggs. They're up there. They're they're gambling. They're playing those short passes. They're not giving them. You know, some of the plays they'll give them, but they're, they're taking away a lot of those plays just by being up there playing aggressively. Murray is 8 out of 11, but he only has 76 yards in the passing game and no points. They've gone downfield once, and that was to a back. There's a good look at Marshall Land, number 77, and he's just not big and good. He's going to go for his master's and Ph.D. in sociology. Second and ten. Flag is down as they dump it over the middle again, and oh, it's no. intercepted. And now the officials were blowing the whistle during the middle of the play and saying that uh, there was no play. What a break for AM though. That was an interception. Sure was. Bernstein just threw oh. that ball up in the air. He mishandled it. It was intercepted by Texas. Ooh, those are one of those penalties they'd rather not have go five yards the other way. They had the ball. So they'll mark off five against a and Big break there. Well, a and just going to dump the ball. Big ball. False start. Offense. Second down. AM going to their little tosses to Bernstein underneath. It's the secondary. Three deep. You can see middle safety and the outside corners playing his own. They dump it. And he just, it's like volleyball. He dug it up into the air and it was intercepted, but it didn't count. So it's second and 15 as the play is called back. Murray with time this time and throws an incomplete out of the hands of Tony Thompson. <laughs> Griffin was the closest man to it, but Thompson just couldn't hold on to a bullet for Murray. Well, Thompson's been open a couple times tonight across the middle, and the reason is they're doubling Bernstein when they can. They're going to help on Woodside whenever possible, and they're going to take Walker away, so naturally the flanker's going to be open. And he's found him so far, one catch, one drop. That's where they're vulnerable. The great statistic, uh, they just had up 10 touchdowns and one interception in the latest streak for Murray on the season. 16 touchdowns and eight interceptions. And that's a nice ratio to be able to keep. Right now, he faces third and 15. Texas with only one linebacker and six defensive backs in there. And Duncan showing blitz. And they come, and Duncan got there. Almost intercepted, intended for Thompson. But it was Dwayne Duncan, number 48, who was showing blitz and came full out and nailed Murray. Well, they blitzed Duncan, but they also ran a game with the defensive line. It's going to be a twist right in the left of your screen, right there. Bronner comes behind the defensive tackle, and that opened up Duncan. That's a nice job by that defensive line and the linebacker core working together. So AM will have to punt, and Todd Schantz gets off another rocket. Drives Metcalf all the way back to the 10. Nice return by Terry Metcalf out across the 30-yard line after a 57-yard punt, a 22-yard return. Texas in possession when we come back. The rain falls.
miles on Memorial Stadium, but the Texas fans probably don't even know it. They're very happy, up three to nothing, and their team has played impressively in the first half, especially Stafford, who throws complete. Stafford hasn't missed anybody. That time it was Gabriel Johnson, Flowers, and Jones made the tackle. Let's get out of the sideline and Tim Brando. In the truest form of sidelines with Tim Brando, it is raining again, but now it's serious, fellas. And by the way, Texas fans are throwing oranges, not because they're going to the Orange Bowl, but because that's where they want A&M to go. If they lose, that's where they head. But you know, Pat, I was looking, this is a raw orange. Uh, I, was, uh, I was looking more for either a well done or at least a burnt orange to be thrown. <laughs> and Brando getting into the pun game with Mr. McAnally. Burn Orange, of course, being the Texas Colors, first and ten. That appealed to me, that go. Oh. This game is too good for puns. Hunter well, it'd be into different the ball if game for the first time. It'd be different if it was the Naval Academy playing, but wouldn't it? Hunter uh, missed five games with a groin injury. He was the starting tailback this year. Metcalf came on. Edwin Simmons has also played a lot. But they had a lot of hopes for Hunter, who has uh, great speed. Got six on that carry, and it's second and four. It's a sophomore out of Odessa, Texas. AM showing blitz, and Holland comes, and Metcalf trying to get outside. Cut it back to the 40, may have the first down inside the Aggie 40 yard line. So impressed with what Texas has been able to do both offensively and defensively tonight. Well, offensively, again, they're coming up to the line of scrimmage with this check with me system. That means the quarterback's going to check to one run or another run or a variety of passes. So he has the option, and Stafford's very experienced up there. He's making the right choices there. Holland, number 11, was sneaking in. He was going to blitz. So he went to an audible where he went outside quickly to Metcalf, and they got outside and picked up the first down. Five minutes, 44 seconds, and counting in the first half. Texas scored one field goal, drove a long way in position to make another, but missed. Hunter, fumble, and it looked like AM got it. And the battle royal goes on inside. The officials have not made a call, now they have. Aggie football at the 31. And Johnny Holland is the man on the bottom of the pile. And Fred Akers looks on in disgust as his team has its first turnover of the ball game. Well, Texas has lost five games this year, and they've had 17 turnovers in those games. And here it is. Really no reason to fumble this ball. He got stripped, but he's got to hold on to it. When you go up the middle like that, you just can't give the ball up. And that's why Texas has had a tough year. Again, when they lose, it's because they turn the ball over. So the Aggies will have five minutes and 27 seconds to go here in the second quarter to get on the scoreboard. They have been shut out so far. They'll go with Vic on the toss, and Vic is bombed in his own backfield, and it looks like the ball came loose. He may have gotten it back. Big hit by Aldridge. Well, this rain may be affecting some of the ball handling, but really what's going right now is big hits right here. Penetration. That'll stop any running game, and that was a fumble. That was definitely a fumble. Aldridge made oh. the play, but Vic got it back. But Aldridge, again, he gambles. He goes outside all the time. He makes big plays. Sometimes he'll get burnt. Very tough to run outside of him because of the way he sets up. There's Johnny Holland, great player. Second and 14 for AM, and they have been throttled except for the short passing game. There's Vic on the delay. Forget it. He's wrapped up by Steve Llewellyn. Let's go to Bristol and check in with Larry Burnett. All right, Mike, the Fiesta Bowl officials have got to be smiling tonight. It looks as though Miami is going to end up undefeated and play Penn State in Tempe for the national championship. Third quarter, Alonzo Highsmith takes it in easily. Miami without Vinny Testaverde leading East Carolina now 23-3. It's in the third in Miami. And as you can see, Miami starting to roll a little bit tonight, and they are going to be going to the Fiesta Bowl. Well, that's that front four of Texas. Penetration, making the plays. You don't have to blitz when you have linemen like that. Third and 17. Murray dumps it off. Vic out of the backfield. Got by one tackle, but could only get back to the 31-yard line, not even the original line of scrimmage. And Hagee was the man who came up to get it. And Texas A&M will have to kick it away, and the partisan Texas crowd is loving every minute of it, as is Fred Akers. And why not? Shantz, who has punted the ball very well, is on. Well, they are close to blocking it last time. I think they're coming again. Ten-man rush. They don't get there. And not a good kick this time. But it will take an A&M bounce. 
and goes out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. A 50-yard kick for Todd Schantz after a 13-yard roll. Let's go down to Tim Brando again. Tim? Fellas, if atmospheric conditions mean anything in this game, and I think they do, Texas with its three points looms very big right now with a tremendous advantage with 319 left. And after venturing to both sides of the field, I can tell you that the Texas sidelines is pumped up with the three-point lead, even after the Hunter fumble. The A&M sidelines is very concerned that coaches are beginning to feel that they're giving Texas the confidence necessary to pull off an upset. Tim, I have to agree with you. Uh, if you let a team in an emotional game like this stay in it long enough, they're really going to start to believe that they can beat you. Day in motion. And a whistle. I don't think they got to play off in time, and it looks like it'll cost them five. Well, they're going out of that conservative defense. Holland is blitzing play after play now. A&M's going back to tradition. They're going to try to. They're not going to give the plays to Texas anymore. And it's a procedure call that will cost the Longhorns five. But you look at Texas right now. They have a 3-0 lead. They've missed a field goal, uncharacteristic of Jeff Ward. They fumbled when they're inside the 30-yard line on the last series. They've moved the ball very well. They sure have. Have a dead ball. Ball start. Offense. First down. So it's a first and 15. And if they keep gambling, and Brett Stafford's able to make the right choice up there on the line of scrimmage, a and could get burnt big. Stafford, a junior. Holds all kind of records already. The option this time, in a hurry to Metcalf. Holland makes the tackle at the 15-yard line. Howard was also out there, but Holland, number 11, was the man who brought him down. Well, this play does not work because Stafford doesn't get any pressure on him. He pitches the ball too early, and Johnny Holland is just so fast again from the middle. He's just skittering along the line of scrimmage. Now he'll just run Metcalf down. Metcalf down. Look at that. Took an angle and took him right away. But again, Stafford didn't get any pressure on himself. They didn't pick him up. He pitched it too early. Johnny Holland did the rest. Texas with only 47 yards on the ground so far. The running game has not been their long suit this year. Stafford, quarterback draw. Doesn't get much after about the 17-yard line. Howard got over there along with Chet Brooks. It's the second time they tried to run it. Both times it looked very good as soon as he took off. But the AM defense has closed quickly. Clock running with 2.13 to go in the half. And Texas facing third and 11. Coach, what would you do here? Uh, would you put the ball up on uh, third and 11, or would you let the clock run? Oh, I'd go for it. I think I'd go with the crossing route right here. They've been able to burn him earlier. Why give it up? Get, have another chance to score. Texas is three out of six on third down. And Stafford wants to throw. Bombs away. And it's overthrown. Oh, he and had a he had Karan Brown was out there by three steps. Oh, they just... They just split this zone again. Uh, Corrington, the free safety, is not doing the job right now for AM. Oh, he's down in coverage. Well, anyway, they didn't have a free safety. That should have been six right there. He was way behind the coverage. I apologize to Kip Corrington. That was not him, the free safety. Laron Brown, a transfer from Tennessee, a 400-meter man, was out there running his 400 meters. The problem was Alex Morris, the strong safety, was playing free safety, just didn't get the drop. Harris with a high snap, or rather weights, kicking to Harris, and oh, did he bomb it. Harris driven all the way back to the 25-yard line. Got a picket line on the sideline, but he can't quite get there. Back shy of the 40-yard line. Waits rocketed one 57 yards. We have a minute 37 left to go in the half. Surprise, Texas leading Texas A&M 3-0. In this series, don't be surprised if we see the Texas A&M offense look more to its wideouts. Pat, since that opening series where Bernstein was effective, we have not seen him as much a part of this offense for Texas A&M. Now we'll see if they've got a good two-minute drill, won't we? I agree with you. Right now, they need to get that ball to the wide receivers. They can't live with Bernstein. Murray to Bernstein. They'll gain about three yards on that, and Texas will let him have that play all night long. That's exactly right. In the two-minute offense, you're not going to live with two and three, four-yard gains. You've got to get the ball upfield. Bernstein has just set a season record for catches at A&M. He has 62 this season. Not all of them are for three yards. He averages almost 11 yards a catch. Murray in that two-minute drill goes sideline to Woodside. He's 
They say he stays inbounds, and now they will stop the clock as he got to the Texas 46. You can see A&M with two of its timeouts left. Clock at a minute 10 in this hurry-up offense, and this might be good for A&M. The regular offense has not worked all that well tonight. Decision time for the Texas defensive coordinator. Is they going to gamble or they're going to play conservatively? Once again, the short pass again complete at the 39-yard line. Woodside out of the backfield. There is a penalty flag down near the line of scrimmage in the area where you would normally expect a hold. Texas came with another straight four-man rush, and they've done a good job getting pressure on Murray. And it's a face mask. Must have grabbed one of those defensive linemen. 97, Thomas Aldridge is the pressure guy. Right at the top of your screen, he usually rushes outside. This time he comes inside. Now watch number 50, right in the middle of your screen. Watch him go with that right hand, right to the face. Oh, yeah. Nice job by our cameraman there. No question about that penalty. Oh, he just hammered it. It was almost like a face mask and a personal foul. No wonder Aldridge goes on the outside most of the time. He yeah. comes inside, he gets drilled. This is a big penalty against A&M. Cost him 10 on the play and the penalty. By the offense, first down. So they'll mark it back to the 40-yard line of A&M. And it's a first and 25 with 104 left. And the crowd is really fired up. And the defensive linemen of Texas are helping him. Comes the rush on Murray again, almost blindsided. Oh, what, what a, a shot over the middle. The catch is made, but Jeffries leveled. Shea Walker did a great job to hang on. Oh, what a shot. I don't know how he held on to this ball. Stephen Braggs has nailed some people in the first half. Murray again, and throws sideline. Nice catch by Walker at the 33. And they'll stop the clock getting out of bounds. Shea Walker never had time to recover after that hit, but he managed to make the catch. Now this, this will be the previous play. Right, this is the play before where Shea Walker holds on to this ball. They're just in their three deep zone, but here comes number six. Brad just absolutely hammers him. How he held on to that ball, I'll never know. I know one thing, I probably would have been squirted, uh, squirting out of my hands. <laughs> my head probably would have been rolling That's too. It. 38 seconds left. It's first and 10. A&M on a drive. They're in field goal position now as Walker has it to the 10-yard line. Gang tackle there, but it'll be another first down for the Aggies. And they have all at once found Shea Walker. Well, Tim Browndell called that one from the sidelines. Nice job of spying, Timmy. They definitely decided to come out and hit their wide receivers, and that penalty may have helped them in the end, Mike. Got a timeout right now with 30 seconds to go. Here's a shot of the secondary again. They're going conservative. Texas decided to sit back into their zones. This time it's a cover two. Both safeties dropping. Right over the middle again. Wide open. And Murray delivered the ball. They didn't get enough pressure on him. You can't give those kind of throws time after time. Murray's now hit five in a row. He is 13 out of 18, 149 yards. And there is Scott Slater on the sideline. He missed from 48 earlier. Hoping for a chance to tie it up. That is if his teammates don't get it in for seven. This is really, outside of the opening drive, the only time that A&M has been able to move the ball. But they're showing the versatility they have on offense. You know, they have Vic, Woodside, and Bernstein. We saw all those players early. Walker and Harris, their two wide receivers, haven't gotten the ball that often, although Walker has 36 catches this year. You know, they, they keep throwing those short passes, and suddenly the wide receivers will be open. Uh, you can't take everything away on defense. And Jackie Sherrill and the staff have done a good job of finding out what was not taken away and going to it. It's a first and ten situation for a and just outside the Texas ten. Murray wants Walker. Almost intercepted. Great defensive play by Tony Tillman. I'd like to see if he was in on this or not. Let's see if this is an interception or not. It sure was excellent, excellent coverage. Man to man, they're just going to lob the ball. Toughest position to be in as a defensive back. Man to man, no help. Let's see if he's in bounds. That isn't it. Oh, no, I didn't have control of the ball. I don't think he had control of the ball. Have control. Very close, though. Looked like a good call by the official down in the corner of the end zone. Second and 10, 23 seconds left. Fred Akers encouraging that defense. 
Texas showing blitz, and here they come. They don't get there. And now Murray dumps it off to the six-yard line. Aldridge and Espinosa in on the tackle as Bernstein was uh, literally standing in the backfield after throwing a block. I don't know how he ever saw him on that play. That's just an <laughs> incredible vision of the field by Kevin Murray. Just found him. Almost got thrown for a big loss. And there is a flag down on the play with 13 seconds left. The flag was thrown at the five-yard line at the point of the tackle. Disregard the flag. The pass did not cross the line of scrimmage. The pass did not cross the line of scrimmage. Could it have been an illegal receiver downfield uh, and then it wouldn't count if the pass was, uh, in effect, a screen pass, which that would. That's what they call there. That's a nice job by the officials to get together, because that is a tough call to make and to retract. Third and five, 11 seconds. And A&M will use its final timeout of the half with 11 seconds. You know, the irony here is that A&M is really going to their short passing games. They got that 15-yard penalty, and that's when they started throwing to their wide receivers. Murray on the sideline talking with Jackie Sherrill. Coming up at halftime, we'll have Larry and Bino with first half highlights, and we'll also have an in-depth preview of Saturday's BYU-San Diego State game. Pat, Tim, and me will be out in San Diego, beautiful San Diego, California, for a Saturday night game, and the Western Athletic Conference title could be decided. San Diego State wins that one. They take it all. Brigham Young hopes for a win to keep it alive. They and Air Force, and you know the Air Force will be rooting for Brigham Young in that one. Well, BYU arguably is the most influential offensive uh, team in this decade. That along with Bill Walsh on the professional level, they brought the passing game to the college game and opened up the offenses everywhere. Here's the situation for a &M. No timeouts left. If they don't get it in the end zone, they would not have time, or out of bounds, they would not have time to go for the field goal. Here comes the blitz, and they're all over Murray, and he has to throw it away. January came roaring through there and flattened Murray. Oh, that's Nobody of, touched him. Well, that's the type of play you get an interception on. Your quarterback gets hit right when he's delivering the ball. He didn't have two seconds on that play. A great job by January. The second time he has been all over Murray. Now Slater will come in to try one from 23 yards. He missed earlier from 48. He'd like to tie it up. And he got this one. Texas A&M with five seconds to go in the first half. Used the two-minute offense beautifully to get down in scoring position. And Scott Slater out of Fort Worth knocked it through to tie it at three. They say that Fred Aker's future will be announced, or at least decided, on Saturday here at the University of Texas. And you... You have to root for Fred Akers simply because of the way he has handled this. He has not won a lot of big games lately, but then that happens to a lot of coaches, and he's won nearly 75% of the games. Well, I think it's uh, really, this illustrates one of the shabbier sides of collegiate sports. I don't think alumni or reporters should be able to decide a coach's fate. He has won over 70% of his games. He brought in a new staff this year. They have a lot of young players. The coaches are very excited about their prospects of recruiting, because now the players want to go to Texas because they have a chance to play a lot of youngsters. So to deny him an opportunity to use the players he has, he's developed this year, I think it's wrong. Of course, the pressure is more on more than Fred Akers because there have been so many reports that uh, the Lost Dodds, the athletic director, was told if he didn't fire Fred Akers, they'd get rid of the Lost Dodds and anybody else it took uh, to get a new change in the football program. Well, alumni are important. You certainly want their support, but you don't want them in there deciding who your athletic director and your coaches are going to be. I think that's wrong. Well, you can't let them, uh, you can't let them buy the decision-making power. The 12th man kickoff team for Texas A&M. Good question here. Do they go ahead and kick it away? They've only given up the longest return. They've given up in three years is 39 yards. Or do you have a little squib kick with only five seconds left? Well, I think you go with the squib kick here. You don't want to give them an opportunity to set up a return, no matter how good you are. Just play it smart here. And naturally, no, they sir. do the other. They'll kick it into the end zone, and they'll bring it out. Kevin Nelson. 
and Nelson is back to the 26-yard line. That shows confidence in your kickoff team that if you would squib it, all it would do is end the first half, but you go ahead and kick it away anyhow. So that is the end of the first half as Bevo looks on from the sideline. It is 3-3, Texas, Texas A&M. We've got a great one from Austin. Right now, let's go back to Bristol and Larry Burnett. In Texas, it's a 3-3 tie. Bino said it was going to be a tight game, said that uh, Texas was going to come up a winner. We're going to have to wait and see if that happens. As we said, the folks in Arkansas are still waiting to find out what happens with that game as well. Southwest Conference and the Cotton Bowl bid on the line. Let's go back to Austin, Texas. In the heart of Texas, A&M and the Longhorns are knotted at three. Here at halftime, Tim Brando along with Mike Patrick and Pat McAnally. The Aggie line is doing it to it to start the third quarter. The fans are all around. It looks almost like a disco dance inside there with some of those fellas coming out. And obviously the fans need to get them pumped up at this point because as always, Texas, when they have been the underdog, is playing the favored team extremely tough. You get the feeling, and you hate to use the phrase as the Longhorns make their way out onto the field. You hate to use this petty phrase, but he may be the Gipper tonight. They may want to win one for the Gipper. Right now, they're getting it done. The score is tied at three, and for the most part, the Texas defense has been dominant in this game, with the exception of that two-minute drill that really led to all of the statistics for Texas A&M in the first half. Now, as we look at these stats, Mike and Pat, you can tell they're very even, but particularly in the passing yardage, and most of that yardage came in that two-minute drill, Pat, when they went to the wideouts, and they had to, obviously, with only a minute 38 left in that drive that led to the field goal. Well, you're right, Timmy. Uh, A&M, you know, Murray completed 15 passes, but nine of them were just to Bernstein and Woodside for only 73 yards. That last drive, he was able to go across the middle to Shea Walker and once earlier to Tony Thompson for over half the yardage. And it'll be interesting to see if A&M comes out trying to throw the ball downfield or goes back to that conservative offense. And interesting, as Jackie Sherrill looks on, that Texas A&M is a team that scored 74 points a week ago against TCU. They have three points here in the first half. Texas has done just an exceptional job of knowing where A&M's strengths are and trying to take away as much as possible. Well, I think this is what's frustrating for the coaching staff for Texas. I think that they've come in here, they've grown along with their players, a lot of young players, and they're ready for next year. They feel they have the personnel. Fred Akers is confident that if he's allowed to retain his job and the coaching staff stays intact, that they'll take this conference next year. As you saw, they're trying to avoid the first losing season since 1956. And Brand Lucky, number uh, 83 in the middle of your picture there on the kickoff team as they broke it off, is, is one of those Texas linebackers who has come back from an injury. They lost so many guys, uh, especially Britt Hager, a guy who was given number 60, which was Tommy Nobis' number. And the Longhorns have just been decimated at linebacker, but they've done a great job tonight. And there is Ward set to kick it away as Texas A&M will receive to start the second half in the 3-3 game. There is Rod Harris, the deep man standing. Really given time to throw this year, he has been exceptional. I think a lot of people who came to this game tonight, uh, almost 80,000 of them, thought they were going to see a series, unless you go back to 1979. But not tonight. We've had a beauty. High short kick, and Valentine will take it at the five. And gets back to the 25 and no more. A 20-yard return for Valentine. Here's what Texas A&M was able to do on its possessions in the first half. The first two times they had the ball, they had to punt it away. Then the third time, they got off their best drive of the first half, a 10-play drive, but they missed the field goal. Then the next two drives, they also were forced to punt. And then in the two-minute drill, they really did the job, a nine-play drive that resulted in a field goal to tie it up. Even though Roger Vick has been able to get his yards, Texas has done a pretty good job in shutting down AM's ground game. And here goes Vic to start the second half. Nice hole up the 